Hi everyone. So we're going to do some examples of taking the Fourier transform of different functions just to take a look at how this works in practice. And then I'll go through a couple of examples related to things directly on the homework assignment after that. So first, let's actually remember what the Fourier transform of a function is. So the Fourier transform of a function f is a function of a variable s. Actually, a lot of times you'll see the Fourier transform of f written in parentheses to indicate that it's a function and then its variable is s is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t e to the minus 2 pi i st dt. And so again, remember what we're doing here is we are converting f of t, which is in the time domain, and the function that comes out the other side is in the frequency domain. And so the Fourier transform of a function is basically similar to its Fourier coefficients, but its Fourier coefficients thought of as a continuous function. Okay. So let's calculate one. So here's example one. In the video before, I did the Fourier transform of the rectangle function. That's easy enough to do again, so let's do that. So recall that pi of t is equal to 1 when the absolute value of t is less than or equal to 1 half and 0 otherwise. So that's a function that looks like this. It goes along at 0 until it gets to 1 half, then it jumps up, becomes 1 for a while, then it falls back down again and continues. Right. So the Fourier transform of this function is Fourier transform of pi on the variable s is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of pi t e to the minus 2 pi i st dt. But the integral, uh, the only place where this function is non-zero is between minus 1 half and positive 1 half. And so this integral is the integral from minus 1 half to 1 half of just 1 e to the minus 2 pi i st. And that's equal to, well, if I integrate this, I get 1 over minus 2 pi i s e to the minus 2 pi i st evaluated from t is equal to minus 1 half to 1 half, which gets you 1 over minus 2 pi i s of e to the minus pi i s t minus e to the pi i s t. And this can be rearranged as 1, I don't know why there's a negative out here, 1 over I s one over I pi. No. One over I want the two I to be inside, so one over pi s times e to the minus pi i s t positive e to the minus i pi s t over two i. And this is the sign. And sine of pi s over pi s is called sync. So that's the Fourier transform of the rectangle function. So let's do the Fourier transform of a the basic triangle. So this isn't the triangle function. It's going to be a right triangle. And we're going to compute that by doing f of t is equal to t for values of t falling between 0 and 1. So that means that we're looking at the Fourier transform of a function that looks like this. And the reason that we're looking at a function that has bounded area is we want to make sure that the integral we write down is going to converge. So the Fourier transform of this function is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t, zero else, So let's look at the Fourier transform 
of the function f of t is equal to t when we're between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise. So this is a function that tools along at 0 till it gets to 0, then it pops up and does a right triangle, then it keeps going. Okay, so this is a graph of f. So its Fourier transform is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f e to the minus 2 pi i s t dt. But because f was only defined from 0 to 1, or rather it's f is non-zero between 0 and 1, this immediately reduces to the integral from 0 to 1 of t e to the minus 2 pi i s t dt. Now that function is going to be, um, so that function is going to have to be integrated using integration by parts. So we'll let u be equal to t and then 1 and then 0 and we'll let dv be equal to e to the minus 2 pi i s t. We've seen this before. 1 over minus 2 pi i s e to the minus 2 pi i s t and then 1 over 4 pi squared s squared, but i squared is minus 1, so it kills the negative. And we get e to the minus 2 pi i s t. I guess I should be careful here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, but i squared is negative 1, and so there's a minus down here still. Then we multiply across, and we get t over minus 2 pi i s t s e to the minus 2 pi i s t plus 1 over 4 pi squared s squared e to the minus 2 pi i s t evaluated from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1. Plug those numbers in. Well, the term with a t uh, is going to be 1 over minus 2 pi i s times e to the minus 2 pi i s t, not t anymore because t was 1, plus 1 over 4 pi squared s squared e to the minus 2 pi i s minus, well when t is equal to 0 this term disappears, and when t is equal to 0 all of this disappears and leaves this behind so we get a 1 over 4 pi squared s squared. And so this thing that we left with here, e to the minus 2 pi i s times 1 over minus 2 pi i s plus 1 over 4 pi squared s squared plus 1 over 4 pi squared s squared. This thing right here, this is the Fourier transform of the function t between 0 and 1. And we can't really do any better than that. There's not an extra copy of e to the minus 2 pi i floating around that we can somehow magically turn into something different. This doesn't disappear when t was equal to 0 or 1 because s is not an integer anymore. s is a continuous variable. So s could be anything, and so we can't cancel that either. And so this is the best we can do. On exercise 3 of the homework assignment, I asked you guys to show that a certain formula held and it had to do with the function g of t is equal to f of t times the cosine of 2 pi kt. So I want to show you like what that would look like when you're trying to show that a, that a certain kind of Fourier transform equation holds, what the approach even should be. So I asked you to show that the Fourier transform of g is equal to 1 half of the Fourier transform of f, but a shifted version of it. And I'm going to add that to a Fourier transform of f, but shifted the other direction. So in some sense, we're averaging a shift to the right and a shift to the left of the Fourier transform of f. So a question might be, how do you even begin showing that an identity like this is true? And the answer is, well, we have to just start by applying what we know the Fourier transform is. The Fourier transform of g is just an integral formula the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of t e to the minus 2 pi i s t dt. That is the Fourier transform of g. On the other side of the equation, I can write down integrals for these too. 1 half times the Fourier transform of f, well, the Fourier transform of f is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t 
e to the minus 2 pi i s t d t, but I'm not asked to do f of s, I'm asked to do f of s minus k. So I'm going to replace s with s minus k. And the same thing again, but now I'm going to replace s with s plus k. So how do you show that this is true? Well, the first thing you should do is you should, you should replace g with what g is equal to. The integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t times the cosine of 2 pi kt times e to the minus 2 pi i s t dt. And somehow I'm supposed to show that that's equal to this thing. plus this thing. Now when you're looking at an integral formula like this, the best way to go, I mean, there's not a lot of things you can do here. We don't know f, so we can't do any sort of computation. If we're trying to show that this formula holds generally, pretty much the only thing that I can see to do is maybe what I could do is I could replace that cosine with what it is in terms of complex exponentials. And then maybe everything will just work if I do that. So what if I replace the cosine of 2 pi kt with e to the 2 pi kit minus e to the minus 2 pi kit over 2? Maybe that'll fix it. Well, let's see what happens. If I took f of t times e to the 2 pi k i t minus e to the minus 2 pi i k t divided by 2 times e to the minus 2 pi i s t. So all of this is just this. But where I've replaced the cosine with the identity for the cosine. Well, now I've got something I could distribute into. So I could take this exponential right here, and I could distribute it inside. What that would get me is this. I would have an f of t times 1 half times e to the 2 pi k i t times e to the minus 2 pi i s t minus 1 half of f of t times e Oh, it's cosine, sorry, these are all pluses. Plus 1 half f of t e to the 2 pi minus 2 pi i k t times e to the minus 2 pi i s t. So if I distribute, I get this. Now that's starting to look an awful lot more like these guys up here. So all I've done at this point on the left-hand side is I've taken this cosine, I replaced it by the identity that's equal to, and I'm just working out algebraically what that turns into. So common to both of these exponents, if I'm going to add them, is a minus 2 pi i t. And if you pull out minus 2 pi i t from everything inside there, what you're left with on the inside is s minus k. On this term, if you do the same trick, and you add the exponents of the e's together, well, they also share in common a minus 2 pi i k, or minus 2 pi i t, and what's left inside is s plus k. And that is definitely starting to look a lot more like these integrals up here now. Well, what have you just shown? What did we start with? We started with the integral of f of t cosine of 2 pi k t e to the minus 2 pi i s t dt. With the algebra that we've done, we've shown that this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 half of f times e to the minus 2 pi i t s minus k plus 1 half of f e to the minus 2 pi i t s plus k. But at this point, there's not much work left to go from here to here, which was the point of the original exercise to show that those were true. 
So the last step is to break up the integrals. So there's one step left. And this is going to turn into one half of the Fourier transform of f, but on s minus k, plus one half of the, the Fourier transform of f, but applied to s plus k. So that's basically how number three goes. You're going to substitute the cosine for what it's equal to. You're going to squish all the exponentials together. And after you do that manipulation, what's going to happen is what's left over in the end is going to magically turn itself back into Fourier transforms again. All right, so that is the approach that I would take to specific Fourier transforms in the case, for example, of the rectangle function for the Fourier transform of uh, the function, say, t between 0 and 1. And then after you have that down, uh, you can apply it more broadly to formulas where you don't know f, but you can still work with the Fourier transform because you know properties of integrals and you know replacements for sines and cosines in terms of uh, the complex exponentials. All right, so there you go. Keep working hard at this, and uh, I'll talk to you guys for convolution later. See ya.